Good evening. I'm Illinois State Senator Robert Peters from Illinois' 13th District. Before this role, I was a community organizer who worked to end cash bail. Now I'm an organizer in the Illinois General Assembly, where I was the lead sponsor on legislation that will end cash bail. No matter my title, I am an organizer, and I come from the movement. It is time this country understands what is happening right here in Illinois, right here in flyover country, right here in the middle of it all. It is in Illinois that we are seeing what progressive power and progressive movement can do. I've seen it firsthand. Just eight years ago, I took my first arrest protesting Republican Governor Bruce Rauner's draconian attacks on working people. Just about six years ago, Cook County courts moved away from the most punitive cash bail practices. Just two years ago, the Black Caucus passed massive legislative packages in response to the Black Lives Matter movement and racial justice uprising, including the initial passage of the Pretrial Fairness Act, which will end cash bail. Just last year, when faced with right-wing backlash against progressive accomplishments, we have made in this state, our Democratic Party leaders didn't commit the heinous mistakes of Dem leaders in New York. They stood firm with the progressive movement and defended our supermajorities. In fact, in Illinois, our Democratic governor crushed their opponent. Our Democratic Illinois House grew its supermajority. The Democratic Illinois Senate maintained its supermajority, not by running away, but leaning into ending cash bail. And this is thanks to movement. Look, I, I get it. We're in the middle of flyover country. And our country faces a dual threat. We face the threat of right-wingers who are embracing a particular American strain of fascism that violates every facet of public and private life. But we also face the threat of the nihilistic naysayer who tells us nothing can or will change. History doesn't remember the nihilistic naysayer. Who wants to be the one to tell enslaved people they won't ever be free from chattel slavery? Who wants to be the one to tell working people that the New Deal won't work? Who wants to be the one to tell Dr. King that you can't march in Selma because it is too dangerous? We must leave these nameless fools behind. And we have too many of them out there. They are keeping the door open for the worst elements of our politics. They're allowing the far-right troll to guard the bridge to our future. I want to talk about Dr. King. Actually, I want to talk about Coretta Scott King. After her husband was assassinated, murdered by the early iteration of right-wing extremists that we're seeing today, she went to Washington, D.C. and advocated for a jobs guarantee. She said that working people, especially working class black people, needed was a right to a good job, to power. She especially noted this when it came to public safety. She spent years pushing for this. And instead, DC leaders passed the first iteration of racist law and order and tough on crime laws. 50 years later, it is clear that Coretta Scott King was right. None of these supposed, supposed tough on crime laws have truly made us safer. But the good news is, and I come bearing the good news, you're going to hear Brandon Jackson, I'm going to try to preach like, like the mayor, but the good news is, right here in Illinois, the naysayers, the right-wingers, the banal technocrats are losing. They went at our Cook County State's Attorney multiple times, and they're still going. They've attacked our governor, legislator, with tens of millions of dollars of fake newspapers, predicting the end of days due to the end of cash bail. Snap, they tried to elect the mayor of the city of Chicago, but they lost, and they will lose. We're organizing movement throughout the state, committed to building power, lifting up working class communities, and we're tired of the bullshit. It is because of this that I have hope. Right here in Chicago and Illinois, we have models for what organizing and hope and struggle can bring. We elected a transformative mayor, who himself is now our chief organizer. We have city council members and state legislators that are being elected directly from movement organizations like United Working Families and the People's Lobby. 
We have a Cook County Democratic Party chair that awarded a Democratic Socialist Committeeman as well as grassroots progressive organizations for the work that they did. We have a governor who has made it clear that he wants to be seen as the most progressive leader in this country and isn't scared of that. In Illinois, we have massively expanded reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, made collective bargaining a constitutional, constitutionalized right, ended the death penalty, will end cash bail, and we aren't debating whether to provide undocumented, undocumented immigrants health care. We are debating how much we must give to undocumented immigrants. We have passed transformative bill to combat climate change, along with billions in capital infrastructure projects. And here in Chicago, we have elected a mayor in Brandon Johnson who stood at picket lines, has already put grassroots movement leaders in significant positions leading community safety, immigrant rights, labor rights, education, and economic justice. A mayor who's made it clear that he is connected to the very deep and loving soul of this city. Look, my biological mom struggled with addiction, and the system put me up for adoption. And I was adopted by a lawyer who fought against police brutality and wrongful convictions. I was adopted by a social worker who herself struggled with addiction. We can build a world where people can get the treatment they deserve, where people don't have their civil rights violated, where safety is more than blue lights, but truly is comfort. Everyone deserves to have a safe roof over their head, a grocery store, good health care, to get from point A to point B. That is what we're fighting for, and that is the opportunity we have in Illinois and Chicago. We don't need to accept the far right's isolating approach to society, nor the nihilistic cynicism of the status quo. We have a lot of work in Illinois, but I'm proud of how far we've come. Netroots Nation, welcome to flyover country. Welcome to Illinois. Welcome to where progressives are hitting at the intersection of hope, change, and solidarity. Thank you. Now, I'm going to introduce someone who's played a leading role in making this happen. She's one of the smartest political minds I know. She's someone I can talk to about theory and organizing. She's a true strategist. Give it up to my friend, Emma Tai. Thank you. My name is Emma Tai. I'm the former executive director of United Working Families and currently serving as a senior advisor to Mayor Brandon Johnson's transition organization. And doesn't it feel good to say that? Mayor Brandon Johnson! Doesn't it feel good to hear the mayor of the third biggest city in America say out loud that in the richest country in the history of the world, no one should be too poor to live. And doesn't it feel good to see our comrades like Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, who just five years ago was the lone no vote on a proposal to build a $95 million police academy, now become the most powerful alderman in city council. And to see Alderwoman Jeanette B. Taylor, who underwent a 30-day hunger strike to save Diet High School, now be the chairwoman of the Education Committee. And to see Congresswoman Delia Ramirez take DC by storm. For many of us, myself included, hope can feel like a rare thing. You see the wildfires, the smoke and the storms. You see the conspiracies and the racism, the lives lost, the schools closed, the children killed. <laughs> but this moment here in Chicago is a hopeful one, one in which we are pushing the boundaries of what is possible. And I want to take a minute to talk about the coalition that made this moment of profound hope possible. Because we all know as organizers that we cannot do this alone that up against the power of organized money, we need organized people. The coalition that powered a Cook County commissioner from polling at 3% in October to the fifth floor of City Hall in April. We are a field coalition. 
we, and this is not just UWF, but our sister organizations in labor and community, independent political organizations, and down ballot candidates, I see you, Oscar Sanchez, <laughs> knocked over 500,000 doors in all 50 wards, sent over a million texts, and increased youth turnout by 30% from February to April. It's an organizing coalition, and by this I mean that our coordinated campaign recruited, hired, trained, and trusted organizers from the rank and file of social and labor movements, I see you Crystal Gardner, who had politics from their fights for education justice, who had practiced talking about public safety from the referendum for treatment not trauma, and you all should know Kennedy Bartley, she's gonna be the next executive director of United Working Families. She led that referendum, who were in deep relationship with community leaders on the ground already who were able to run an unmatched volunteer field program based on an issue platform built from years of organizing campaigns. It's an ideologically aligned coalition. Our politics, like the politics of our new mayor, were forged from years of collective struggle. I will never forget what it felt like to see black parents dragged out of school board meetings in 2013, crying because Mayor and Barama Emanuel was going to close their schools. The ecosystem of organizations that made this moment possible didn't just pick winnable fights. We struggled for justice and for the public good at a time when austerity and privatization ruled the day. Erecting a political alternative means we use every tool in our tool set strikes and occupations, negotiating for legislative concessions when we can get them, introducing legislation that we know won't pass because we need an alternative, and elections. We won't always win in the short term because there has been a generational project by the capitalist class to shrink the terrain of the possible. But we are animated by the belief that we should win because we should strive to be the multiracial, working class majority that can win. We do not elect saviors. We use elections as structure tests to tell us how close we are to that majority political will. <laughs> and this is the coalition that has the courage to make the impossible possible. The stakes never get lower. People left their jobs to work on this campaign. True believers, like women like Stacey Davis Gates of the Chicago Teachers Union. Erica Bland at SAU Healthcare, Diane Palmer at Local 73, black women risked the power that they built over years of difficult organizing to do this. Candidates and elected officials campaigned on a coordinated slate, even though we are always told just to run your race. This movement, movement is not possible without the courage, determination, and audacity of everyday people who dared to fight for more than the crumbs that we have been given. And this is a coalition, like Fred Hampton taught us, that dares to struggle, that dares to win, and that is going to transform Chicago, this nation, and this world. Thank you, Netroots.